I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming and this is our Rush VR review. As always, let's start off with what this game is. Now, Rush VR is a arcade style wingsuit racing game where you pick up a boost based on how crazy you kind of maneuver around the environment. So the closer you get to rocks, the closer you get to ground by steering in between trees and the like, that's how you get your boost. They give you extra speed, so the game is all about speed and maneuverability. The game has four mountains and there are 80 paths in total. That means there's 20 different ways to get down each mountain. And each mountain looks quite different, although the paths look quite similar. Now, some are very open, some are incredibly narrow, and you unlock more paths by placing well in the ones prior. So you play this game in single player to unlock stuff, but it does have multiplayer modes as well. And speaking of multiplayer, you can challenge your friends or random people on the internet to quick races. Now, back to the single player game. There are multiple game modes. We've got time attack, race to the finish, and score challenges. But we're not getting to the meat and potatoes. I can see it in your eyes. You want to know, can you customize the way you yourself look? And you absolutely can. By beating different challenges, you can unlock different outfits. You can choose different colors for them. So not only are you unlocking courses that you go down, you can also unlock the way you look so that when you're looking down at your body and you can see your body in this game, you can choose how it looks. And again, if you're playing multiplayer with your friends, it'll add up more. It's more valuable in that sense than it is just in looking down to see the colors that you chose for yourself. But Rob, how do you control your flight? That's a really good question. Now, the default control method is by holding your controllers out to your side. When you lift them up, you will gain air. When you drop them down, you will drop. When you want to steer, you lift one arm up and the other one down and varying degrees will choose how sharp all of these movements are. There's also a look to move because this game works in seated, standing, and room scale. So you may not have room to hold your arms at your side. And if that's the case, you can either control by either where you look or you can choose by tilting your head left and right. So multiple movement options. And this is available on the HTC Vive. It's available on the Oculus Rift. And let us not forget our Windows Mixed Reality brothers. So this is available on all three. I think we've talked about all the points in the game. Let's get to an actual review. Some pros, some cons. Is this thing worth your while? Now, one of the pros I'm going to list that I think should be pretty obvious is the game is pretty. It's really, really pretty. They did a good job graphics wise. The ground looks interesting. The, lot, the rocks, the trees, the other players around you. It looks really good. So major pro in the looks department. For me, another big pro would be the fact that this thing has bots. So as much as I love playing multiplayer games, VR community is still quite small and there aren't always other people to play with. So if you want someone to compete against and if in X amount of time there are less players playing this game, that's not a fear. There are always AI to play up against and some of them are really good. So you definitely have a challenge that way. I happen to like that this is an arcade style game and it's not aimed towards realism. It feels like a arcade racer, just you're using your whole body to do so. Another plus is I like the fact that they put a helmet on your head in the game. So for one thing, I think it reduces some feeling of, of motion sickness. And, and I should mention that I didn't actually feel any level of motion discomfort in this game, except at the end, after you beat the final loop, after you race through the final loop, uh, a parachute deploys and you kind of head down that way. And that one always turned my stomach a little bit. But being semi-prone to motion sickness, even though I play a lot of VR games, I found this was not too shabby in that department. But that's getting away from what I was talking about with the helmet. Sorry about that. Now, the helmet gives you something to focus on. I know way back in the day, and I won't get into the details, a lot of developers played around with putting a nose in front, and it helped a lot of people with motion sickness. You can turn the helmet off if you don't want, but Another bonus of the helmet is your environment will actually affect what happens inside the helmet. So you'll see condensation running down the outside. If you're flying through snow, you could be getting ice buildup and frost and stuff like that. So that again, adds another level of realism. Now let's get on to a couple of negatives. Now I mentioned about the parachute at the end. I didn't love that. I was a little disappointed that this didn't quite give me the feeling of movement that I was hoping for. Uh, if I look at a game like Ultimate Booster, for example, that game still messes me up. If I try to stand upright, it messes me up every time it kicks off and I was hoping that 
when I dropped off the ledge and when I dropped off an edge and flew into it, it, it feels neat, but it didn't give me that immersion that I was hoping for. And that's probably more a negative that I went into it with higher expectations to what it could bring. There's a lot of hype around this game. And as a bit of a warning, I would say not all of that is maybe worth it. At least it didn't affect me. It may affect you totally different. And it goes without saying that this is a racing game. If you don't like racing games, stay away from this. In the end, it's still going to boil down to you learning the best route to take to get the highest speeds, to get from circle to circle in the quickest amount of time. And that means kind of learning your track as it were. But that's it. Now, the actual score, I'm going to give this thing a 3.75 out of 5. And this is a fantastic example of maybe why I should have stuck with out of 10, which I originally started with, because this works out to about a 75%. I like the game. It does what it intends to do well. It doesn't have oodles of depth. Like I wasn't super excited to do all the unlocks of the costumes. I wanted to see all the mountains, uh, but I, I can't see myself going back to this over and over and over. It's a $20 game, however, and to be an experience that's totally different than what you've seen thus far, I think 75% is about a fair value. And that's it, that's the review. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like if you liked the video. If you don't like it, let us know why. We are constantly working to get better. Subscribe if you wanna see more of our videos. We keep pushing these out and the only way you're gonna know when they come out is by subscribing and comment. I love hearing from you and I do my best to always get down there and comment back. That's it. Thank you so much and we'll talk to you again real soon. See ya.